I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I release grace to flow in your direction. I know that something is about to change in the course of life as you hear this message. I want to bring to your notice a source that will open floodgates of heaven, floodgates of prosperity, floodgates of mercy and grace over your life. My name is Pastor Don Odunze Jr. of the Family Circle Ministries, Enugu, Nigeria. You will be familiar with my voice now and I know that my voice is bringing grace to someone hearing it right now. I know that the God I serve is the God of all grace. Whatever you need, his word can provide it for you. You don't need men, you need the word. Locate the man with the word of God for you and you are on your way to what you're looking for. The word is what matters. It's not just about signs and wonders, it's about what has God spoken. Even the devil cannot stand it. And today, I bring you a message boiling in my heart. As I see people struggle, as I see people hustle, as I see people doing all manner of things to be able to go through life. And I've seen that so many are walking in ignorance. Today, I want to speak to you on what I title, Where are the sons? Where are the sons? Where are the sons? There's a difference between a child and a son. In the course of this message, you will understand why I said, Where are the sons? It's important that you understand that life is not a product of struggle. Life is not just a product of what you are doing. Life is a product of the grace that is upon you. Life is a product of the knowledge that you have, of who you are and the forces at work around you. That is what we are trying to deal with today. You may be on a journey, listening in a bus or a car. You may be listening through your handset. People are loading the messages through handsets or your laptop. You may be in the office listening. Whichever way, let's just share a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for today. This day is not complete without this message. That's why you brought it our way. Lord, I ask that your power will flow through the waves of the air and touch somebody's life listening to me. Lord, I ask that this will be a turning point in somebody's life. May the word hear the voice of the Lord and not my voice. Speak to us in the language we'll understand. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let me hear you say amen. Amen. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9 from verse 15. And it says, I'm reading from the New International Version. And it says, For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he had died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. Verse 16. In the case of a will, it is necessary to prove the death of the one who made it. Because a will is not in force only when somebody has died. It never takes effect while the one who made it is living. I repeat it again. Verse 16. Where a will is in place, it does not take effect until the one who made it has died. That's another version. Another version calls it the testament. For a testament is of force where there had been death. For it does not avail until the person who made it is dead it cannot work while the one that made it is alive i want you to take note of this and today i talk about where are the sons the book of hebrews where we read said that a mediator comes to take care of a new covenant i want to make you understand that a covenant may not necessarily mean that you made it but if you're connected to the one who made the covenant you're covered by the covenant we are not just living life. A man in a court has a confidence because of the covenant that has been done on the altar. He has a covenant there that is running everything. So even his enemies are subject to the covenant that he has already made. A man's covenant goes beyond him to his children, to his business, to his family, to his association. A man's covenant is powerful. 
And the man's covenant runs four generations to his son, to his grandson, to his great grandson. And people are running lives on another man's covenant and not knowing it. You pack into a covenant where a man has made a covenant over his building and you don't know it and you are submitted to forces that are greater than you fighting and you don't know that somebody has covenanted his car. Of course, you should have known that by now. I said it empowered by the altars that there are cars that come from some parts of the world that come into Africa that go through the order of priesthood. A priest from one court comes to speak over them before they are shipped. A lot of these cars come in and they have emblems or stickers that you don't know their meaning. If you verify, you will discover that some of the stickers on cars that are brought into this country, into Africa, some of them are stickers of courts in Europe and Asia. And these things are operating under covenant. And the person who is not a part of that covenant begins to use it. It becomes destructive to that person. But hear me today. The Bible is saying that the Bible is saying we have a new covenant. A covenant that was sealed with the blood of Christ. The man who knew no sin. And hear me today. When you talk about covenant, that is what comes in place when you are taking the communion. You are not just taking blood and bread. You are communing, communicating with a covenant. You are communicating in union, communication and union. You have come into a covenant where certain things cannot operate around you. If you are not operating on that covenant, you become a victim to a man with a covenant. If you are not enforcing your own covenant, then another man's own overrules yours. But today I have the confidence to tell someone here that there is no blood on any shrine. There is no blood on any court. There is no blood on any place that can contend with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The blood that dropped from the cross to the ground and there was an earthquake. The blood that dropped and there was darkness on the earth. The blood that dropped and then the curtain was cut into two. Giving us access into the holy of holies. We can now call God and call him Abba Father. That is the covenant we have. And I want to tell somebody here. If you are not part of this covenant, I am sorry for you. You will end up a casualty. What covenant? But hear me today as I talk about will. If you read some passages of the bible in different this passage of the bible in different versions you will hear them talk about testament another version of the bible talks about the will the will and hear me today the will let me center on the will because we will understand it what is the will i'm going to talk about the will i'm going to talk about the testator i'm going to talk about the beneficiary and i'm going to talk about the mediator what is the will follow me closely the will is a written document stating what a man has acquired and giving the rights to enjoy it to the people that he wants. A will is a written document that is written where a man gives out what he has labored for and then names those that are going to enjoy what he labored for. In other words, I can tell you that a will is a man's right to enjoy what he didn't work for. A will is the power of a man over properties that he didn't know when they were built. The will is a man's authority to enjoy what he did not work for. That is what Christ made for us. That is what the will is. Hear me, can I tell you something? The Bible in your hands is not just the book. It is the will containing everything that your father has left for you. The will is the Bible. God in Jesus Christ his son left us a will and the Bible says a cattle upon a thousand hills belongs to him and he said all power in heaven and on earth the will of men contain visible structures the will of men contain cash in the bank buildings properties here and there mines here and there bonds here and there but i want to tell you that the will that jesus has left for us is not just about properties he has left us powers he has left us things that can get properties from anywhere he has left us things that can make us rulers in the midst of our enemies listen if you don't have enemies you are not important if you don't have enemies you are not a person you are not a person to be reckoned with the Bible says he set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. If you have no enemies, you don't have any place to put your table. 
you, you, are, you have a table before your enemies because when you finish eating, somebody should wash the plate. That's what your enemies should do. They should wash you. Listen, the Bible says you will rule in the midst of your enemies. So enemies have to be there. All enemies must not die. Stop praying, die, die, die. All of them should not die. Some of them will need to be alive to see that in all that they did, you were still more powerful than they are. In all that they, they said you can't have a child, they must eat rice in your wedding, eat rice in your dedication before they die. Then they can die. They need to use their mouth and change what they have spoken. They need to change their mind. Some of them need to change their words, swallow their words. Your covenant overrules that of the shrine in your village. The covenant of Calvary overrules that in any court. And I challenge anyone, hear me as you hear my voice today. Whatever covenant that is challenging you, challenging your destiny, saying you can't get married, saying you cannot, you cannot prosper, saying you can't live a good Christian life, saying you will be frustrated. As you hear from me today, I am a practitioner of a new covenant. I am a carrier of a new covenant. And and I pass it through grace to you as you hear me now. By the time you end this your journey today, a difference will be made in your life. God is about to open new doors where old covenants have closed doors for you. You are about to shine brighter. You are about to move higher and no hand can stop your movement. Let me hear somebody say better amen. The will. The Bible is not just a Bible. It's not Christian religious knowledge book it is the will left for us where everything we own has been written for us I want you to take note of that that is the will the will is a written document nations have constitutions and before you change them you come into meetings it costs you much to change a little part of a constitution the will I have that my father has left me in the holy book listen Nobody can add to it. Nobody can subtract from it. That is the will. Follow me closely. I want to take you somewhere. I talk about the beneficiary. Every will has a beneficiary. Somebody enjoys it. Listen, it is not everybody that enjoys from the will. It is only the person that are in relationship with the man that has written the will. Everybody does not have access to the things in the will. And hear me today, I want to say it clear. If you are not born again, you have no business with the things that God has left for his people. There's a difference between creatures and sons. He created everybody. Everybody will enjoy the sun. Everybody will enjoy the moon. Everybody will enjoy the rain. Both the good and the bad. But there are treasures, there are benefits that only those who are sons can enjoy. There are things that happen in the day of adversity that only those who are sons can have access to the help to come out of it. There are those who will be swallowed. And hear me today, the beneficiary is the one who says, I accept Lord Jesus as my Lord and Savior. It's not about going to church. Prostitutes go to church. Arm robbers go to church. I've had drug pushers come to me to pray for them because they felt that I have anointed so that they can go for their drug business and come back and they promised to bring me a tithe of a 200,000 I said just 200,000 is that why you want to kill yourself for four generations all the people taking the drugs they are causing all the people whose families have taken drugs and their sons are dying they are causing the people that are bringing it go and check those who are in drugs and check their lineage and check what happens to them it's not about you it's about those coming after you you want to benefit I want to ask you a question today. How long will you go on with this kind of lifestyle? Drinking. Womanizing. Telling lies. Hustling. Girls call it runs. How long? You can only get Blackberry. You can only get iPad. You can only get Brazilian hair. You can only get cars. At the end of the day, what next? You don't even have the peace. Perhaps you're on a journey even now to go for one run somewhere so that you can collect some cash. At the end of the day, where will you be? What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? 
As I talk to you now, think about your life. Are you the person in charge of your life? Do you know you can lose it in the next moment? This road you're going, do you know that many have died in it and didn't return? Only grace kept you up till now and you're taking it for granted. Hear me? The beneficiaries are those who trust God. Listen, it's time for you to get back to church. Somebody listening to me, you were in church, but at the time you just left and started running your life. You better get back to God. Go to church. Belong to a department. Stay under a pastor. Somebody must be giving account of your life. Somebody must be speaking to God on your behalf. Somebody must be somewhere supervising what you're doing. If you're not there, somebody should be able to caution you and rebuke you. Any prophet, any man who cannot rebuke you for doing bad is not a good man of God. Change that person. The people that collect money from you and cannot regulate your prayer life, that cannot caution you when you don't come for Bible meetings, my friend, they are just eating your money. They are not a covering over you. I beg you. That is for the beneficiary. And then you will come down here and you see the Bible talking about the mediator, the person that stands between the beneficiary and the will and the, and the testator then you have the testator the person who wrote the will of course i don't need to tell you who wrote the bible we serve a god that has kept something for us hear me i want to take you somewhere just follow me gradually before you know it we will round up the testator can i tell you today that it is only a man that has properties that can leave it for others to enjoy a man that has nothing, has nothing to leave for others. If some, of, some of us are suffering. If the person who came before you succeeded well, your life should have been better than what it is now. But you are struggling because the person who came before you made no progress. And you are now trying to cover up his own track and your own track. A lot of men I see today are struggling, walking and they can't see anything. A lot of men who should be sons have been kept aside because they don't have anything to show for it a lot of young people i've seen this happen in families where you see a man full-fledged man in the family nobody talks to him the mother has now taken the last born who is bringing her pocket money as her son others are not sons anymore because the one behind is the one bringing rapper bringing food others don't have the money to bring it and you see mothers who will disown they will not say it with their mouth but their attitude shows it you won't respect your firstborn. The respect you give to the firstborn, you give it to the lastborn just because he's bringing money. You see some people now, they respect their in-laws more than their sons just because you, your in-law brought money and your son doesn't have money. Now your daughter has become the son. Is the person you're proud. Is the person you talk to. When they come home, you cook food and put good meat for the one that brings money and then put pomo for the one that doesn't bring anything. That is if you give the person at all. I pity such women. I pity such mothers and fathers. That is witchcraft. Very soon God will shock you. You make that person that has money a trap for the devil to strike. That is what you are doing. All your children may not be the same, but give them the same love. Give them the same affection. That one is making money than the other does not make the other a less human being. The time is coming when the person will rise and the time is now. Peradventure, you're one of such persons listening to me. Get ready. Any moment from now, situations will change for you. Believe my word. That is all you need to do. Believe that God can make a way. He will send you help. Any moment from now, you will not end up like this. This mockery is enough. This shame, this disgrace is enough. You will not suffer it again. By powers vested upon me as a servant of God, I channel grace into your life now. Let the one who will help you, let your destiny help her. Let the one that will raise you up manifest in your life. I decree it now in the name of Jesus. Hear me today. Hear me. The will. Now, the will has laws. I will go through it very quickly. The will has laws. Number one, according to the Bible, the will must be written. That's one. Two, the testator, who is the person that wrote the will, cannot open the will until he's dead. The will cannot be opened until the testator is dead. The person who wrote it. I want to bring out something here to you. Somebody get ready because your eyes are about to be opened. The will can only be opened 
while the testator is dead why because as long as the testator is alive he can change what he has written in the will he can decide to remove anybody and put it but it is open once he's dead that's why they say after two years two weeks three weeks one month that the person has died he will call the family and then they will open the will when the testator writes the will he puts this in the hand of a mediator who is a lawyer hear me I want to open your eyes now and I want to give you grounds to hammer the devil on his head the Bible says that the testator can only release his will when he's dead so you will discover that Jesus laid the pattern for it for us Jesus had to die so that the will of God can be released to us so that the Bible can be opened to us he had to die first before the access can be given to us into what he labored for the price he paid the blood he shed was a price for somebody's prosperity it was a price for somebody's promotion it was a price for somebody's children to be delivered it was a price for somebody to build a house it was a price for somebody not to be enslaved by uncultic men it's a price for somebody to walk and see the fruit of his labor and there are people who are enforcing the wrong things on people and hear me today jesus died so that his will can be opened unto us today we call ourselves the children of god because jesus died today we can say we are beneficiaries of jesus and all he has done because he is dead on that premise i want to say to somebody today if it means that a man has to die before his will can be opened what it means is that if the devil has to enforce his will over you if the devil has to stop you from getting promoted if the devil has to stop you from getting married if the devil has to stop you from moving forward then he has to provide his will and for his will to take effect he has to die if the devil is not dead then he has no will to exercise over you ah i pray you open your eyes and get this jesus died and his will was open we can say let thy will be done the devil can never say it if the devil has to put his will over your life then he has to show us where they buried him the devil has to show us where they buried him can i go further to tell you that spirits do not die it is only human beings that die that's why jesus had to become flesh and he entered the stomach of a woman she, he was carried for nine months he was delivered in a manger we can see the manger where he was delivered he lived for 33 years and he died if the devil has to enforce his will over your life he has to produce his mother let him show us the maternity house where they delivered him let him show us the place where they buried him Today we can say this was where Jesus was buried. If the devil cannot produce these things, I am here to declare to you that that devil cannot stop you from moving forward. If the will of the devil is for you not to get married, that will cannot stand. If his will is for you not to be promoted, it cannot stand. If it's for you not to travel abroad, it cannot stand. If it's for you not to build your house, it cannot stand. Before it will stand, let him produce his grave. If the devil cannot produce his grave, I have the audacity to tell somebody that's listening to me now, you are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. I see you moving higher. I see you moving higher. As you pray tonight, tell that devil, show me your mother before you can stop me. Show me your graveside before you can stop me. If they cannot produce it, my friend, I am seeing you at your next level. Your next bus stop is a higher level. Let me hear you shout a better amen. That's the first. The will will be open when the testator is dead. Now, look at the second one. When the testator is dead, he transfers the will to the mediator. The mediator will open it when, because a dead man cannot open. Hear me? The dead person cannot talk anything on the will. That is why even the gift that Jesus has given to us, he can withdraw it. For the gifts of God are without repentance. And now look at this. It transfers the will to a mediator who will hold it and now enforce it when the, when the testator is dead. But look at this. We've come to discover I had to consult a lawyer to make a research, to make a study before I brought this message. I spent two hours with a lawyer to be able to get the effect, the execution of, of will. And I've come to discover even the lawyer told me 
that mediators can be bought mediators can be influenced a young girl can twist her waist and then the the barrister will sleep with her and alter the will a boy can promise the will promise something in the will to the barrister five percent ten percent and he will change the will listen to me human mediators can be bought can be influenced then look at this jesus saw that this thing can happen and then what did he do ah he died but he refused to stay dead jesus refused to stay dead he cannot hand over what he labored into another man because that man can be bribed jesus decided to rise from the grave by himself so that he can also become the mediator he will not hand it over to somebody he wants to personally supervise what he has done to make sure that nobody takes from you what he has kept for you no wizard will take your life no wizard will take your job no person will take your husband or your children nobody will take the job that belongs to you nobody will take the contract that belongs to you jesus had to rise because he needed to supervise his own will by himself and make sure that no human mediator will be influenced to shortchange you to shortsecute you from the inheritance kept for you that is why i have the boldness to tell you today you can go to sleep and sleep very well because he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. He is awake watching over you to execute his will over your life. And today I want to declare over you that will that Jesus has made for you. Get ready any moment from now. Execution begins. You are entering into another world where you enjoy things you didn't work for. Where you enjoy things without struggle. Where men will work and be a blessing to you. If you are that person, let me hear you shout, Grace! That's what it's all about. Grace is the, cry, is the price that Christ has paid for your success. Grace is the muzzle of God for you to use in physical assignments. That is what it is. And hear me, in, a, in the case of people, they have a human mediator because the testator is dead. But in our own case, the mediator is also the testator. You can't remove him from there because he is there working to establish what he has made for you. I was traveling one day. I traveling one day from Enugu to Abakaleke and then where they call Bible Society Junction. I saw a man very early in the morning at about 5.30 to 6. And I saw a man with a basket. And he came with the basket and kept it at the middle of the road. When he saw me driving and coming in, he stepped aside. I stopped by the basket and I stepped out of my car. And I saw inside the basket, there was a lizard, there was egg, there was something they tied with a red cloth. There were cowries. The man was by the side looking at me. And I said, ah, what is going on here? I came out, I looked at it. And I looked at the man. He was looking at me. I was looking at him. And I was asking myself, who is the person that a covenant is being tied here? Who is the person that they say cannot move forward here? Who knows who this man is tying here? And then the spirit of God came upon me. I started my own incantation on the road and I started moving around the circle. And I started my own, own incantation and right there after speaking, I declared he was looking at me. I said, whoever is tied here is loose because I am an advocate of the mediator. I stand as a representative of the mediator and right on that road, I kicked that basket and pieces everything that was inside it as i entered my car to drive up the man looked at me and used his hand and said waka and i matched my break and i used my two hands and returned the waka to him hear me he that digs a pit falls inside it whoever is tying you or saying anything mentioning your name anywhere from this moment fire will answer them thunder will answer them let me hear somebody shout amen we operate on a covenant. My daughter, my children all over, they are under a covenant. That is why Eliezer prayed in Genesis chapter 24 when he wanted to look for a wife for Isaac. And he asked, he prayed and said, Oh God of my master Abraham, show me good speed this day. If God, you will not answer me. Answer me because of the covenant that my father has with you never stay under a man without a covenant 
locate men with covenant and they will cover you and you will have your covering you will have access to things you should not have had it is scriptural is somebody hearing what i'm saying today i want to encourage you now look at this the mediator will now take it jesus has become the mediator but this is where i want to say what i want to say as i round up This is serious. The will cannot be handed over to children. A child cannot be a beneficiary. The, the, the will is kept in custody until the child grows and becomes an adult. You don't give children wills to enjoy. Hear me today. I want to read a scripture to you. And I want you to understand that God is in the business of doing something. Galatians chapter 4 I read from verse 1 Now I say that the heir As long as he is a child Different nothing from a servant Though he is the Lord of all But is under tutors and governors Until the time appointed of the father Even so we When we were children We are in bondage under the elements of the world But when the fullness of the time was come God sent forth his son. God sent forth his son. Not his child. The Bible says unto us a child is given. Unto us a, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Children are born. Every man gives birth to a child. And waits for the day that child will become a son. Where are the sons? Children. Do not handle the wheel. It is sons that handle the wheel. Unfortunately, sons are not measured by age. There are a lot of men at 40, they are still children. What marks a son is responsibility. Hear me today as I ask you, if I ask, talk about a son, both male and female are inside it, whether you are male or female. Are you a son or are you a child? Let me make this very clear. Hear me. Sons take care of their fathers fathers take care of children when a son is going out the question is when are you coming back because a vacuum is created but when a child is going out the question is where are you going so that we'll be sure you are in a safe place fathers grow and walk to take care of children when the children become sons sons become the people walking so that fathers rest which one are you? Can I tell you that today the church is filled up with children. Men who are looking for milk to suck. Are you a son? Or are you a child? How many years have you been in church? You can't fast from 6 to 6. 12 o'clock you're looking at the time. You will claim ulcer. You will claim malaria. That is why you cannot fast. You are still a child. Bones are for sons. Bones are for sons. Milk are for children. How long do you spend? Listen, children are the ones that go to church on praise festival. Let us go and dance. Let us go and uh, gyrate. Sons manifest on the door of evangelism. Have you ever spoken to somebody about Christ? If I may ask you. What steps have you taken to be able to tell someone I have a father that can take care of you. Come over. Where are the sons? Where are the sons? Fathers recharge the phone of their children. Sons recharge the phone of their fathers. Responsibility is what makes sons. Today we have people at 40, at 35, at 30, at 25. You are still collecting pocket money from your father. What are you talking about? Rise up and take responsibility. Today we have married men that are still children. You can't absorb anything. Any little thing you are angry and you flare up. A little child will make you angry, you will beat it. An adult will make you angry and you will beat it. You react to everything. The Bible says it is to the discretion and glory of men. To overlook offenses you need to get matured 
I want to talk to somebody today. Why will you have to deal and deal with someone even when the person has said, I am sorry because you can't control yourself. Sons. Where are the sons? It is only sons that defend their father's inheritance. It is only a son that can see somebody intruding and say, hey, you are entering into my land. It doesn't belong to you. The Bible says here, while children remain children, they are like servants. Not until they become sons. He says, they are servants. Even, they, even though they are Lord. Even though God has given something to them, they have it. It belongs to them, but they can't enjoy it. They are servants because their mindset is still that of a child. How long have you sat down just to read the Bible and pray? What's the maximum time you have ever prayed? You sleep by 10, you wake up by 7. Those in Lagos, in Wari, in Port Harcourt, you sleep, by, you sleep by 11, or you sleep by 12, you wake up by 4 to eat the bread of sorrows. You don't have time. You have time to read your papers. You have time to read your novels. But you can't have time to read one chapter of the Bible. You have time. Listen, children, when I see, when I see your, your handset, when I see your CD rack, I know whether you're a son or whether you're a child. If we come to, children, listen, if you tell them to, they turn to cartoon. Cartoon. Channel O. When sons come, the real sons, they look for TBN. They look for God channel. They want to fill up their spirit and be able to execute the will of their father. When last did you spend time? Can you produce a note where you can write the things that God has spoken to you? You think God can speak to you? He can speak to you. Listen to me today. Take responsibility and become a son. You have a pastor who labors for you, prays for you, speaks over you, and yet every day you keep collecting prayer. You keep. When will you stand and execute and be a blessing? When past, when when fathers travel, past children pay their children cry because nobody to take care of them. When fathers travel, sons stay back and say, "No problem, we are at home." When fathers travel sons pay their bills can you imagine your mother flying to come over and you are telling her to pay her bill let her buy her ticket and come that's what is going on i encourage you to go back now no matter what they've done be a blessing take responsibility over them how can you be footing the bill of a girl somewhere and you're not footing the bill of your spiritual father, your pastor, or your biological father. Have you ever been a blessing to them? I was listening to the testimony that a pastor was given. A, a lady died and was about to go through autopsy. They were about to cut her open and the husband of the lady called the pastor. The pastor said, don't touch her. She is sleeping. And then manifested in the spirit and the person in custody of the place, it was in the spirit, as the pastor, what, which one do you want me to release to you? He pointed to that woman. And the person asked, pastor, why do you want this particular woman? Give me three reasons why this woman should be released back to you. And the pastor said, this woman, the church is standing on her. We need her for the church to stand. Her contributions are needed for the church. She's doing so much for the church. If she goes now, the church will shake. And then the person said, take her. What are you saying? What prices have you paid? Are you relevant? Can a man of God somewhere kneel down and say, God bless this person. Sometimes we don't understand that the men of God are men before you put off God. That a man of God will pay school fees. He will not speak in tongues to the principal. That a man of God will pay house rent. That a man of God will have to fuel his car. That a man of God has to do certain things and take care of other people. People think that when you give to a man of God, you are wasting it. People think, why should you give to him? People, people, I can't understand that. But that does not matter. The Bible says, when you listening to a man of God and he ministered to you in carnal things you minister he ministers to you in spiritual things you should minister to him in carnal things that's the scripture become a son there are men today footing the bill 
Evangelist Rena Bonke has come to Africa and has blessed many, raised a lot of sons for God because he stood as a son. And there are men that stood by him and said, Go, we will pay the bill. These are people he can look at and you say, These are my sons. Today, he's taking another man round and he is handing over to him and saying, This is a son. And then he will go. Listen, sons are celebrated even on the day of baptizing Jesus. The Bible says a, a voice came from heaven and said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Not my child. Because Jesus has come to undertake responsibility. What responsibility are you undertaking? As a married person, you are a, you are a child to somebody. Who is your spiritual father? Who is your biological father? Are you still a child or still a son? Ask somebody by your side. Are you a son or are you a child? Are you a son? Ask the other person, are you a son or are you a child? It's one question you need to understand. The Bible says the world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Children don't manifest. It is sons that manifest. You manifest in responsibility. You manifest in shining. You manifest in glory. The things you do show you forth. Today I can stand. My father handed over and even said it publicly. I have a son. Before he passed on and he said, even if I am gone now, I am fulfilled because I have a son. Today, he doesn't just have son, he has sons. Every man standing in this family is a son, manifesting the glory everywhere they are. The same is coming into your family. The same is coming into your life. A man came to me, took me to his bedroom and said, please, he's a pastor. He said, please, I have only one pain. My only son is a pain in my flesh. He had to send his son abroad so that the shame the son brings will not affect his ministry he said that grace that is upon you to carry the glory and the work and the responsibility that your father started i want to tap from that grace he sent me into his word into his bedroom we knelt down by his side of his bed and we prayed he put a seed in my hand very dangerous seed and then we made prayers we called the name of that boy and said we command you to come back home just less than three months by the grace of God not because Don Odun is a prey just because of the grace he has released upon us the young man called his father and said daddy please I'm going to need school fees I have just enrolled in a bible school I want to become a pastor the father said that is impossible it's not true he had to call the registrar of the university of the, of the, of the school to be able to be sure that this young man has entered and they said they cannot understand the change in him there is nothing god cannot do but i ask you in the heart of your father as you're listening to me are you a child or are you a son your mother washes the plate you used to eat your father washes his car while you're sleeping they sweep the house and you just get dressed and you leave then you have no future you're still a child sons take responsibility i am mandated to raise the sons of families I am mandated to make sure that you step out of a place where you are a child and people control you and you come to a place where you are in charge. You are in charge. Where are the sons? Too many children running all over the place. Where are the sons? If we look at your handset, we will know. The kind of song you play there. People with, na with, with naked bodies are your screensaver. People, people that, that have nothing to offer you are the people that you use as your wallpaper. The kind of songs you play in your, in your handset are rubbish. Sons use everything they have to project the glory of their father. They project the glory of their father. They project the word of their father. The word of their father is theirs. There are, mis there are, there are ringtones you hear. Your spirit is activated. There are ringtones you hear, you look around to say, who, who is the person with this kind of thing? Are you a son or are you a child? Heaven is waiting for sons, not children. Every man gets, gives birth to a child and waits to see that child become a son. Whether you are male or female, you must take a decision now to reorder your life. 
Where are the sons? I have the audacity to declare that I am one of the sons. Are you one of us? The word is waiting for our manifestation. I bring you to the altar of sons. I bring you to the altar of sons. Where we do not say we cannot do it. Where we say by his grace we can do all things. We take charge no matter the enormity, no matter the magnitude, no matter the size of the challenge. We can face it. Give me this mountain. We shall overcome it. That is what sons declare. Children will always say, the giants are there, we cannot go. Let us stay back and manage ourselves. Sons say, we need to enlarge our coast. A will has been left for us. We need not just to build on the will, we need to enlarge the will. Every responsible son will enlarge the will of his father. And today I bring you to that altar. As you close your eyes, can you ask God to come into your life? Can you tell Jesus, I have played along, I have lived my life. From today, I want to become a son. I want to take charge of my world. I have an allocation and the mediator will not handle it again. I take it because I am now a son. God is listening to you now. Can you put your right hand on your chest? Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for my listeners. Lord, give them the power to become sons of God. May glory manifest out of these lives. Give them the will to change, to start what they have not been doing, to stop that which they are doing that is not right. Let there be a complete turnaround. Let this message become the delivery room of sons from this moment i release grace to become the son that the word is waiting for you to manifest thank you father for these ones i speak grace over you i speak grace over your academics over your relationships over your business over your spiritual life i speak grace over your family you will succeed and men will look at you and they will celebrate you your father will sit down and he will say, this is my son. God in heaven sat down and he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am pleased. I see you manifesting as a son and very soon the world will know that a son is in you. I speak grace, you will succeed. You can write, check our address on the jacket. I believe God something has started in your life don't go back to childhood when i was a child i behaved like a child now that i am an adult i behave like one i see you manifesting more grace to you in jesus name amen <laughs>